Throughout NBA history, we have had thousands of players to play the game. The best to play are always remembered in the history books, and even the worst players are remembered. But what about the guys in the middle? Every generation has their underrated players, but this player from the 90s doesn't get as much recognition as he deserves, especially since he was influential enough to have Pearl Jam name their band originally after him. The 90s are often referred to as the greatest era of basketball due to a plethora of factors. You had superstars like Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaq, Charles Barkley, John Stockton, Patrick Ewing. I could go on all day. What made this era so great was the competitiveness that was going on during this time. And one of the most overlooked players from this time was the six-time all-defensive player Mookie Blaylock. Mookie Blaylock was a star at Oklahoma, becoming an All-American and leading them to the championship game during his second year as a Sooner. He showed great flashes of scoring and it became evident right away that he had a fantastic defensive IQ, averaging almost four steals a game over his two years. Blaylock would be drafted with a 12th overall pick in the 1989 draft by the then New Jersey Nets to help bolster up the defensive end of the team. The start of Blaylock's career would be great as he would average 10 points, 4 assists, 3 rebounds, and over a steal and a half a game in his rookie season. During his rookie season, he had a steal in all but 8 games, showing that he could be an elite on-ball guard from the jump. As the years progressed, he would then average over 2 steals for the next 11 consecutive years. He would continue to get most improved player votes and make the NBA's first and second defensive team over a six-year stretch from 93 to 99. During this time, he would have his best years of his career, including the 93-94 season, where he actually got one MVP vote, tying for 11th in that year's race. He would average 13.8 points, 5.2 rebounds, 9.7 assists, and 2.6 steals a game, making his best overall season. His career high in steals would come in the 96-97 season, where he would average up to 2.7 steals per game, with 17 points, 5 rebounds, and 6 assists as well. He was an all-around guard. The thing about Mookie that was so good at stealing the ball that he had mastered the art of getting a steal without fouling. He is 6th in NBA history in steal percentage, ahead of all-time legends like Jordan, Chris Paul, and even the all-time steals leader John Stockton. There has only been 69 instances where a player has had 200 plus seals in a season in NBA history, and Blaylock holds 5 of those. To put this into perspective, Kyrie Irving has averaged a steal and a half for a good amount of his career, but Blaylock had more steals in 5 seasons than Kyrie has had in his whole 13 year career up to this point. Looking back at some comparisons for Blaylock, it seemed like he was seen as a Drew Holiday type. A great on-ball two-way player and a great piece to a contending team, he just never was the best player on his team but could be a perfectly good third option. Mookie was one of the best true point guards at the time but fell victim to the fact that he played during the same time as other point guard greats like Stockton, Peyton, Price, and some other younger guards like Nash and Kidd towards the end of his career. He was the perfect third option point guard, being an elite defender and putting up 14 and 7 over his career, being able to score and assist at will, and getting up to 5 or 6 rebounds almost in a season as a point guard. A very, very good overall career for him, especially as that third option for most of his career. He was just a dominant force on both sides, and he did exactly what he needed to at the point guard role. Blaylock was a respected and pretty well-liked player during the 90s as a role player, and like I said before, Pearl Jam actually decided to go by Mookie Blaylock as the first name of their bands. When they were on tour, they needed a name to go by, and the story goes that they were looking through a box of sports cards, and Mookie Blaylock was the one that they found, and they decided to go with that name, and as we can see with posters here, they actually went with this name, so... For a while, before they were called Pearl Jam, one of the most famous bands of that time period and overall actually went by Mookie Blaylock, but this is probably the least exciting part of the story that we'll get into with the rest of his career as it would go downhill very quickly, unfortunately. In 2013, Blaylock's career and life would change forever. 
He was involved in a head-on collision in Georgia, and he was placed on life support. His vehicle caused the accident, and he said that he had a history of seizures before, and it seemed like once everything came out, he actually would have a seizure due to a alcohol withdrawal. He was a alcohol abuser at the time, and he did survive the crash, but a passenger in the other car would end up unfortunately passing away and Blaylock actually would plead guilty to this and he would face 7 to 10 years in trial and would accept a plea bargain in the end and after that he had 8 years of probation that he would have to go through so a very sad ending to the career and overall at this point he had been retired but especially one of the players that was definitely beloved during the 90s i mean pearl jam even decided to name their band after him would have never expected that this would have happened to a guy like that but over his time it was said that he did have multiple duis at least seven of them it would come out later to say that but two of his sons would end up playing football for the university of kentucky so he did have a good amount of time, especially during the 90s and the 2000s, where he was on top of the world. He may not have been a superstar level player, but he was a well-respected, well-liked role player in the league, making an all-star game, being an all-defensive first and second team player. But in the end, there was just some demons that he couldn't overcome. And Blaylock is still alive to this day, but uh, like we said before, he's still living out those demons that he had to deal with earlier in his life about 10 years ago. So unfortunate ending here for him, but hopefully everything can go well for the rest of his life. He's still a relatively young guy. I mean, coming out, he's only 56 years old, so hopefully he can get his whole life turned around at this point. But just an unfortunate ending to see an athlete beloved like that end up having a unfortunate turn to the end of his career. Let me know down below what you guys think of this video. Like I said, Mookie Blaylock had a very interesting life and career up to this point. One of the top overall role players in the 90s, one of the most underrated defenders all time. And personally, before I made this video, I had never even heard of him. And I know that may be a casual take. Let me know down below if you guys have heard of him. But he's one of those players that if we think about players in the 2000s, like I said, a guy like Drew Holiday, if we look back in 20 years, 30 years, if we look ahead to the future, he could be a guy that a lot of big basketball fans maybe not know. He may be an underrated guy in a sense. So I didn't know about Mookie Blaylock before I made this video. So going into this, learning about another player, I hope you guys got to learn about the story of Mookie in this video as well. Also pertaining to everything that he had throughout his whole career, becoming an all-star and the unfortunate downfall of him and even Pearl Jam going by Mookie Blaylock at the beginning of their career. Let me know down below if you guys like these stories time videos i know so far you guys have been showing great love to these in the past two videos especially the tj warren video and let me know down below who you guys want to see in the next video and if you haven't watched that tj warren video the bubble mvp go up and watch it right here and i will see you guys in the next one